Freemasonry, an ancient fraternity shrouded in mystery. With roots stretching back to the medieval stonemasons, its age-old traditions have remained virtually unchanged for centuries. When people hear the word Freemason, they think about funny handshakes, uh, they think about rolled up trouser legs. If you do a little bit of Googling, it's a cabal of people that are taking over governments and things. Freemasonry, secrecy, secret society, 100%. Now, as the Brotherhood celebrates its 300th anniversary, the United Grand Lodge of England is allowing the cameras in for the first time to reveal what really goes on behind closed doors. Right, now, will you bugger off? <laughs> With unprecedented access, we lift the veil of secrecy to discover what it means to be a modern-day Freemason. I feel a bit inadequate. It's a lot of fancy aprons. A lot of fancy aprons. From the regalia... My mum might say I look like a complete Wally, but you can never please your mum. Forward, brethren. ..to the lavish ceremonies... You will seal that with your lips. ..and ancient rituals. Do you have anything to give in the name of charity? No. All of the rituals that we do, which are like little plays, I love them. <laughs> and, of course, the unbreakable bonds of brotherhood. Yeah, some of that, brother. <laughs> Describe it, you go, why would anyone want to do that? But once you're in it, you get it. Freemasons must believe in a supreme being of their own choice, but it is forbidden to worship the devil. There are around 200,000 Freemasons across England and Wales, though exactly why men join is a matter of widespread speculation. For 300 years, the United Grand Lodge of England, in the heart of central London, has been headquarters to this secretive brotherhood. To non-Masons, what goes on behind this imposing facade is the subject of endless speculation. The doors are always shut, so I don't know if I can... I, I can't imagine what crazy things happen behind there. Secret society. Very much. Where you don't get in. Yeah. Unless you are got the secret handshake and you know what's going on. <laughs> When I think of Freemasons, I don't know, I just don't get a good feeling about it. I think it's like a religious... I, I, don't I always know. thought it was like an actual, like, a cult. Sir David Wooden, a former Lord Mayor of London and one of the highest-ranking Freemasons in the country, is well aware of the public suspicion that surrounds the craft. Because Freemasonry has the reputation of being secret, uh, others are very uh, prone to imagine uh, what uh, what goes uh, on, and all you have to do is look at the internet to see some of the wilder theories that we're designing a new world order or getting up to uh, bad things. Freemasons have not always been secretive. Before the Second World War, they would parade down local high streets in full regalia. But Hitler changed all that. It's not widely known that uh, during the 1930s and 40s, up to 200,000 Freemasons died uh, under Nazi uh, occupation. And the perception uh, that uh, that might happen should the Germans under Hitler arrive in this country was a, a real source of concern. Uh, the only uh, part of uh, British countries uh, that was occupied was the Channel Islands, uh, and there there are photographs here of uh, the sacking of the Masonic Temple in St. Helier. And that was one of the factors leading during the war and after uh, the, the, the war to masonry to go a bit secret, low profile. Hitler murdered Freemasons for being a subversive force, and in the decades after the Second World War, with secrecy now the norm, public suspicion of the craft grew. So the secrecy element made basically an, an easy target, and it takes time to recover from that, because once these 
conspiracy theories, these perceptions uh, have common uh, currency. They keep on being repeated in the media and, and elsewhere. It just takes time. But for many non-Masons, clinging on to a culture of secrecy isn't the only way that Freemasonry is stuck in the past. We've been a, a male-only Grand Lodge for, for 300 years. Some people have very strongly held opinions that, you know, that, that women shouldn't be allowed to join, and some people think that women should be allowed to join, and um, I think it's just, a, it's just one of those things, really. <laughs> I've absolutely no idea what would happen if women were Freemasons, but all I know is, is that it will never happen in this country. I think some people would feel that perhaps the, the, the character of a, of a meeting would change if there were, were mixed genders, if you had men and women in the same meeting. There's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't do anybody any harm. And our wives love us being Masons because they know where we are. I mean, I think any... Um, open-minded woman out there watching me and listening to me right now, she could probably think, so what? I don't want to be a Freemason. I'd say, there you go. Though the membership is small in comparison, women do have their own separate Masonic organisation. And for many members of the all-male United Grand Lodge of England, that's the way it should stay. If the perception is that Freemasonry is a big boys' club, absolutely right, it is a big boys' club. In Bedfordshire, Dean O'Connell is worshipful master of the Russell Lodge. Freemasonry is traditionally, from way back, way, way back, a male thing. It has always been a male thing, exclusively a male thing. And as long as it continues in anywhere near its current form, it will always be purely a male thing. It is the way it's always been and the way it should always be. Yeah, lining up now, so probably one minute. The brethren will remain standing, whilst the worship master. Women may be excluded from this ancient boys' club, but that doesn't mean they're ignored. Freemasonry and Freemasons do hold our ladies in very high regard. And every lodge, every year, generally has a ladies' night, a big ball, a big event to thank our ladies very especially for letting us out because we want to be let out again next month. How many of these have we got to do? We've got the last two. We have 98. As top man in his lodge, it's Dean's responsibility to organise this year's event, assisted by his wife, Mitch. Three-course meal, wine, a gift, and you get treated like a lady for one night. Just one night. Any more than that's too many nights. On the ladies' night evening, it's a tradition that the worshipful master is called president for the evening. Mitch is then the first lady or the, uh, the, uh, the president's bird. As president's bird, wrapping gifts for the lady guests is not Mitch's only contribution. A traditional part of the ladies' evening is that there's a toast to the ladies from one of the brethren of the lodge, thanking them for everything they do, and then the lady of the night will give a return of speech in thanks. It's a situation that I've been put in that I haven't chosen myself. So Dean is a master, and my view of it was, it's he's a master, why am I having to stand and do a speech? I don't like speeches, I don't like being a centre of attention, and it's the fact that everybody's going to be looking at you, and you have to say something. Have you got to kiss all these women, as it's the ladies' night, to well, say hello? Not all of them, necessarily. Nin but... 98 women? I suppose I can cope. <laughs> The things I have to do. When he got into it, I was told oh, he would just be out a couple of times a, a month. And then he really got into it. And now he's a member of, like, five lodges. And he really likes it. But in the week, it's good for him. If he's worked hard, then he can go out and play hard with the um, doing the Masons. Women can become Freemasons with two grand lodges of their own. And they still call each other brother. Freemasonry has traditionally been male only, but in the 18th century, a lady called Elizabeth Aldworth managed to surreptitiously go into a lodge meeting. And to keep the secrets secret, they made her a mason. Pretty good. <laughs> okay with that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, short, tall, short, tall, short. In Bedford, 
Worshipful Master Dean O'Connell is preparing to host the Russell Lodge's annual Masonic Ladies' Night in a local hotel. This goes with that for the steward. Where his wife, Mitch, as First Lady, is expected to deliver a thank you speech on behalf of all the female guests. I need a drink. I think I need a drink just to calm me, just to chill me. Mitch has been exceedingly nervous, not sleeping particularly well, and stressing about it an awful lot. You ready? Ooh! Hoppla! <laughs> Cheers to you. Good night. How are you feeling about it all tonight, anyway? I'm not going to be able to eat properly. The fact there's only six on the table now, which means I'll feel even more, like, exposed. But doesn't it feel like it's good that we're all there supporting you and you're not in a room full of strangers? Or would no, you it'd do... be better. I'd be would better. Would you really? Yeah, I think I would be better oh. because it wouldn't matter if I do it wrong. Nobody's going to know if you've done it wrong anyway. <sighs> when I said it first, I cried. Oh, bless you. And I know I'm going to cry. I am hugely supportive as much as I can be. She might not think so, but in my own way, I'm hugely supportive. I say, it'll be fine a lot. Oh You'll clock. be absolutely fine. White eyes. You look fabulous, darling. Do I look? Fabulous. Bald here, look. Come on, chip chop. Time to go. I've got to get my bag, darling. <laughs> Waiting for your lady to get ready is always something that demands a huge amount of patience. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I've got to do my lipstick before we go down okay. again. Sorry. All right, go on. I can't. It is, it is the nerve-wracking moment. It is the last, the last preparation before then making your way downstairs and presenting yourself in front of everyone. I think I need a wee. Oh. I'm really sorry. I can't help it. If I need a wee, I'm probably better to go for a wee yeah, now. Yeah, go for a wee now. So it's, it's, a, it's quite a nerve-wracking moment. I don't know if I want to go yet. It's time to go. Do I look right? Yes. My yeah. eyes look really red. No, you're fine. Gentlemen and brethren, please remain standing to receive the president accompanying his beautiful lady. For men like Dean, bitten by the Freemasonry bug, it can be an addictive and time-consuming hobby. Smile. Smile like you enjoy yourself. Ladies' nights are a rare opportunity for wives and partners to join the fun. I think most of the wives and partners of Masons, once they get to understand a little bit about what goes on, would um, rather boil their eyeballs than actually have anything to do with it. Do I call you Princess or Queen Mitch tonight? I don't know. There's going to be anything I'm petrified. To me, it's not an interest, but the social side and their brotherly get-togethers uh, are something special, I think, I think, for them. They do take it very, very seriously, I know that. And, and I think they also, um, from the people that I've spoken to, including my husband, they find it quite emotional. It's strange. The, the things, not the things they do, but the, like the penny. In my mind, it's a little bit weird, but not so weird that I kind of think, please don't do that. I like supporting him and I like the social side of it, but I'm not interested in what goes on behind the apron. <laughs> The toast is the ladies. the ladies. With the meal and the formalities and the traditional Mason song to the ladies out of the way. I'm a Mason's wife, get me out of here. It's time for Mitch to deliver her speech. Ladies, gentlemen and brethren, I now claim a reply from our lady, Mitch O'Connell. A thank you on behalf of all the ladies in the form of a poem. Hello. OK. Standing here in front of you is really terrifying. Something I've got to get through, um, although I really feel like crying. <laughs> <laughs> but my fears I'll put aside to say I appreciate you being encouraging and supportive. I'm just not sure about your singing. So thank you, Ben, for your speech on behalf of all the ladies. But if you really want to thank us, buy us all a new Mercedes. Yeah. Oh, well done. Oh. Well done. Oh, you did it. I did it! <laughs> so, has Mitch's Masonic adventure given her a taste for joining up? 
no, I'm quite happy. i am not got this yearning to go and be a Freemason. No, I'd not. No, and I'm not even the sort that will want to know and find out about it either. It's a boys club, basically. It's an excuse for a group of men to get together and do a few masonic -y ritual, funny handshake things and have a drink and a chat and go out quite a lot. Women may struggle to see the appeal of Freemasonry, but it clearly holds a fascination for many men. I enjoy all sides of Freemasonry. Uh, the ceremonies, the work we do in the community, all of it. I enjoy, I enjoy Freemasonry totally. I enjoy dressing up, I enjoy learning rituals, I love stories, I love heritage, I love history. So all of the rituals that we do, which are like little plays, I love them. The skirt points to that straight and undeviating line of conduct laid down for our pursuit in the volume of the sacred law. In general, most Freemasons' meetings wouldn't get a BAFTA nomination. The pencil teaches us that words and actions are observed and recorded by the almighty architect to whom we must give an account of our conduct throughout life. It's a bit like brain training, but when you do get it right, there is a sense of uh, achievement. The compasses remind us of his unerring and impartial justice, who, having defined for us the limits of good and evil, will reward or punish as we have obeyed or disregarded his divine commands. There are certainly lodges where people really take pride in, uh, you know, in learning a piece inside out and, and delivering it like a kind of miniature performance. Perhaps surprisingly, performing ritual is part of the attraction for many Masons. Chaz Elliott, a former actor and theatre producer, is worshipful master of a lodge that's famous for giving particularly good ritual. Hello, Chelsea. Chelsea Lodge is an entertainment lodge. It was founded in 1905 by a group of entertainers. Past members include Bob Monkhouse, Dick Emery and Peter Sellers. In this lodge, putting on a good show is a matter of professional pride. The criteria for membership is that they make their living from the entertainment industry. We've got comedians and ventriloquists, musicians. So we know what is expected if one is to give a, a, a good performance. Welcome, sir. Guys. Welcome. And members of Chelsea Lodge are expected to give a good performance, with masons from across the country booking in advance to attend their lodge meetings. The success of Chelsea comes from having lots of visitors. We literally have coach parties. How are you here? I think they're star spotters, yeah. I don't think they come to see me. <laughs> Current stars they do come to spot include ventriloquist Roger de Courcy, not forgetting Nookie Bear. Are you both good at learning your ritual? Yes. <laughs> I'm uh, brilliant. Pardon? Brilliant. Yeah. Can't do these nars. <laughs> We're both brilliant, no and 70s prog rocker Rick Wakeman. Some lodges, of course, are very strict. You have to, at Chelsea, you're expected to learn it. And not just say it, you're expected to understand it, project it, and act it. Unlike most lodges, Chelsea meets once a week to hone their performance skills in what's known as a lodge of instruction. Today, they're rehearsing a second degree ceremony for one of their younger members. Jonathan Chandrapandi, JC001, is his stage name. Uh, I understand that Jonathan is a, a rapper and a, a beatbox artist. Uh, he speaks uh, fluent French and, and is apparently well known in France. It's ridiculous, why are you giving me that? The salad is the same temple as the pizza, why is that? So whoever said variety is dead is wrong because it's alive and well and living at Chelsea Lodge. Brother Jonathan, where were you first prepared to be made a Freemason? In a convenient room adjoining the lodge. No, I don't think so. It's very difficult because it doesn't rhyme. And it ain't got a beat. <laughs> I can't rap it. Where were you first prepared to be made a Freemason? In a convenient room adjoining no. the lodge. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it puts your brain in a different perspective. You have to start using other bits of the old grey matter. 
with just days to go before the ceremony and an audience of more than 200 expected, it's down to chance to make sure everything runs smoothly. The pressure is on the worshipful master, whoever it is, um, and I think yeah, the master has to take the lead. It's the swan syndrome, uh, yeah, so you have to glide elegantly on top of the water uh, and paddle like mad underneath to make sure everything's going fine. The date on the paper is the 14th of January 1966, and it was great. Fortunately, Chaz has decades of showbiz experience to call upon. It's me aged about 19, I think. I've been a Butlins red coat, been a blue coat, a green coat. Uh, I then worked uh, on a cruise line as entertainment officer. That was the first pantomime I was ever in. That's great, isn't it? I think the entertainment business is really, it's just so absorbing and it's just, it becomes, uh, people become passionate about the business. We've got that in common in Chelsea. Freemasonry and a business that we all love. We have those conversations all the time. Like uh, funny old men sitting around, putting the world to rights, and particularly the entertainment business. Uh, we talk about brotherly love within Freemasonry and you know, without being too sentimental about that, there is a, a bond, and that's, that's very special. I work in show business. Um, I do kiss men, and I kiss men at lodge meetings, uh, and they kiss me, and it's, and it's lovely. Showbiz Freemasons include Rick Wakeman, Joe Pascali, Harry H. Corbett, Jeremy Beadle, and Peter Sellers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who these people are. After you've done your three degrees and are a master mason, then there's a whole plethora of different degrees that you can join. They're side orders. So-called side orders include Rose Choir, Royal Arch, Mark Mariner, Knights Templar, Mark Masons, Knights of the Scarlet Cord. Masonic side orders exist for those who just can't get enough Freemasonry. The Master Mason's apron. Worshipful Master Chaz Elliott completed the first three degrees, or steps, of craft masonry nearly 40 years ago, but was still hungry for more. What's known as the fourth step is into Royal Arch, or Chapter, and then you join another degree, and that's called a mark degree. And then we have a colourful apron for Royal Art Mariners. There's one other degree that I'm interested in, so I hope I yeah, keep in good health to be able to uh, continue the journey. I think a lot of Masons, after they've done their third degree, don't want it to stop there. They want to find out what comes next. There's a massive world of Freemasonry, a massive world of different degrees, all telling different stories, all got different meanings. We tend to call them side orders, which does bring up images of um, onion rings. But sometimes if you go to too many orders in a week, sometimes you do forget which one you're in and you get it all wrong. <laughs> I think it's quite easy to become a semi-professional Freemason if you're not careful and to find that your, your calendar is just full of Masonic meetings. Every degree in Freemasonry helps you understand Freemasonry a bit more and every single degree has a lesson which you can apply to in life. I'm Royal Arch. I'm also um, a Rose Croix, which is a wonderful order, yeah. Prince of the East and West, you can call me Prince. Not like Prince the singer, real Prince. With its numerous side orders, Freemasonry is an extraordinarily intricate story with a moral message, some impressive sounding ranks, and a variety of colorful outfits. But for many outsiders, that's not enough to explain Masonry's enduring popularity. Sir David Wooten, one of Freemasonry's rulers, is in five different orders. There is a perception that Masonry has an element of self-interest in it. Ram standard bearers. Second Assistant Grand Sodula. People think Masonry is an exclusive club, 
and that advantages are passed around to the advantage of the members and to the disadvantage of uh, other people. And uh, uh, in my experience, that is uh, not the case. Grand scribes Ezra. We are told in the rules is you do not misuse for business purposes for personal advantage or Masonic uh, connections. And from what I've seen of the Masonic disciplinary process, it is very strict. In all organisations, there are those who break the rules. Solicitors, uh, accountants, architects, people will always think there's something going on behind the closed doors, but by and large, people don't become masons for reasons of self-interest, and if they did, they're going to be disappointed. Do you get back scratch? No. If that was the case, I wouldn't have any points on my driving licence rather than, rather than those. It's, it's another one of those great urban myths. I've never had a business conversation in masonry. It would be far too boring. To be fair, when you've worked for 10 hours uh, or longer, um, the very least thing you want to do is explain your own business to your chums. You're not going to get any money from it. You're not going to get a better standard of living, a better mortgage rate. You know, you're really not. There's no financial benefit to joining Freemasonry. In fact, it can be quite expensive. Has he ever scratched your back? Not at all. The hand goes inside. Yes. <laughs> But Freemasonry does look after its own in more transparent ways, through Masonic charities. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. In Swansea, local undertaker Matthew Sims has reaped the rewards of a system established hundreds of years ago as a pre-welfare state safety net for Masons and their families. The music was actually quite recent. I did my master's degree in 2012 and 2013 um, with financial assistance from uh, the Royal Masonic Trust for Girls and Boys. And without their assistance, I just wouldn't have been able to afford to, to go and obtain a degree, which was something that I always wanted to do. Not everybody gets to, to graduate with, with a master's degree. You know, but, but I still want to. I still want to give something back. I still, I still have a great deal of gratitude. Matthew, Hello, love you, Sue. Hello. Hello, Hello, Matthew. How are you? Matthew's desire to give something back to Masonry is about to come to fruition. We need 147 people in total, including the dais. For more than 18 months, he's been working to set up a brand new lodge. Are there any ones with taller backs for the purpose of my OCD? All members of the new lodge will share Matthew's passion for music, and the official consecration ceremony is less than 24 hours away. These are quite important people, so we decided to reserve them a seat. And it helps the uh, director of ceremonies, who's going to be bringing the people in. It just helps them to be able to identify where they need to be seated. You see, we don't need this. Working alongside Matthew is Provincial Grand Director of Ceremonies, Worshipful Brother Peter Jones. Can you put one at the back over there? A consecration is like a birth, and that's what we're looking forward to now with the Music Lodge. Oh, no, 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 not, not a big one. No, no. You need a small one. Just a small one, yeah. It's, it's a job I love. Oh, I know what we're missing. We're missing the three here. I, I can't even say it's a hobby, because I don't think that's right. It, it, it's not just a hobby, it's more than a hobby. But we can finish the row off and we, we can put a couple more in there. Peter, perfectionist. It's like being director of a play, really, you know. You have to look at the ceremony, then you have to work out exactly how it's going to work. These are the new collars of the officers, new officers of the lodge. And we didn't have anything to hang these uh, on. And I thought it would be appropriate if I brought a music stand along, which does the job and sinks to the ground. As a founder uh, of, uh, of the lodge, um, which you don't say very often, it's, it's almost like 
our baby, you know, so it's important that, that it goes correctly and goes smoothly, that we can consecrate the music lodge with a bang. How smoothly the ceremony goes will depend largely on Peter. So we're all ready now yeah. for the morning. All we need is people. As the director of ceremonies, you're here to direct the ceremony, to direct the thespian element of it. You talk to everyone and make sure that they're absolutely sure in what they're doing. Look, are you OK with your bit now? Are you, are you happy the way we're processing in? Are you happy with that? And then I panic just a little bit, you know, sort of to make sure that I've done everything. Let's go for a pint. I think music can help us an awful lot to understand how masonry works. The words that are in the ritual, for me, work a little bit like their music. When you see ritual delivered well, you know that somebody has really spent a long time going, going past just knowing the, the notes to knowing the music. If the ritual is performed well, then I think you do get the message that is contained within the ritual over far better. If it's just monotone, then people do tend to go to sleep. I think all Masons are very secret actors at heart. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> when I was first started as a Mason, I, I was just so impressed by looking at people from all different walks of life that were smashing this ritual. There are lodges out there which are ritual superstars, yes, that definitely want to make me want to go and see them, yeah. At Freemasons Hall, the ritual superstars of Chelsea Lodge, led by worshipful master Chaz Elliott, are preparing for curtain up. Always have to carry one of these with you. <laughs> do I get nervous before lodge meetings? Yes, I do. But I think performers know if you're not nervous, you're not going to do a, a good job. So fear is only bad when it shows. You see me sweating now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we'll be fine. <laughs> We've got over 200 people here, so and everyone's quite excited. Um, and I haven't had a moment to go and stand in the corner and mutter the whole ceremony to myself. It'll, I'm sure it'll be fine. But the wonderful Roger de Course is going to be on my left. He's our chap, Ben. And you're going to help me, aren't you, Rog? Uh, no. Got any shoes? My mum bought them for my birthday. Topping the bill at today's ceremony is beatbox artiste Jonathan Chandra Pandey formerly the world's fastest rapper. Yeah, there's a few people in there who are opera singers, drummers. They've smelt the, the grease paint. They know what the lights are like. They know what the roar of the crowd is. So you're not that special. You are just another brother. <coughs> With its showbiz brethren, meetings at Chelsea are a little different from a run-of-the-mill lodge. Brethren, it's showtime. Here, they really do put on a show for their guests. Worshipful Master, um, is it your desire and wish that we can now speak with a comedic tongue? It's what I live for, Fred. Because we have several professional comedians uh, as members, um, they can't wait to jump to their feet to fill a pregnant pause. There's a very good uh, Christmas present. It's a sat now for the over-70s, lads, because it'll tell you where to go and how to get there. And when you get there, it also tells you why you went. <laughs> <laughs> Tesco's now do this new dating agency, so I've put my mum on it. Uh, but sadly, uh, nobody really wants a bag for life. <laughs> <laughs> Bless me, mother, she loves that gag, she really does. Once the laughter's subsided, the serious Masonic business can begin. The myth that Freemasons ride goats into the lodge has never been true but still survives as a way for Freemasons to wind up their initiates. The rituals in Freemasonry are intended to be a shared experience which strengthen the bonds of... Oh, I'm really sorry I'm having such a shocker. For many members, performing ritual is the most enjoyable part of Freemasonry, and the showbiz Masons of Chelsea Lodge, led by worshipful master Chaz Elliott, pride themselves on being among the best. Brethren, our brother Jonathan Chandra Pandey is this evening a candidate to be passed from the first to the second degree. 
They're about to discover whether rapper and beatbox artist Brother Jonathan can live up to their high standards. Brother Jonathan, where were you first prepared to be made a Freemason? In the body of a lodge, just, perfect and regular. And when? When the sun was at its meridian. In this country, Freemasons' lodges are usually held in the evening. How do you account for that which at first appears a paradox? The sun being at the centre of our solar system and the earth consistently revolving around it on its axis and Freemasonry being universally spread over the earth's surface, it necessarily follows that the sun must always be at its meridian with respect to Freemasonry. He performed incredibly well. It was, uh, I've never seen a performance like it. Who are fit and proper persons to be made Freemasons? Just, upright and free men of mature age, sound judgment and strict morals. I just, I, I th he thought we were at the Globe, I think. Yeah, it was, yeah, bless him. Brethren, those are the usual questions. If any brother wishes me to put others, I will do so. <laughs> Brethren, uh, I'd now like to uh, hand over to our compere, Roger de Corset. With Jonathan safely passed to the second degree, it's time for the traditional post-meeting social event, known as the festive board. But this being Chelsea Lodge, it's a festive board with a difference, a cabaret performed by the members. OK, good evening. Hello, everybody. And hosted by Roger de Corsi and Nookie Bear. Um, we'll do some impressions, film impressions, film titles. Film, film titles, film titles, yeah. Look back in anger. Oi! No, um... Oi! For worshipful master Chaz Elliott, it's Masonic heaven. I love Chelsea meetings, they're always good. I'm not sure my wife a bit would be very happy when I say this, but it, 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 it's like being at your own wedding. Hey, in the summertime, when the weather is high, you can just ride up and touch the sky. When the weather is right, you got women, you got women on your mind. The people that are suspicious of Freemasonry I honestly believe they're missing a treat. You've got that, that common bond, and that's, that's the great appeal to me. All my best friends are Freemasons. And the public may continue to believe that behind closed doors, Freemasons are plotting a new world order and giving each other a leg up the greasy pole. But for Chaz, at least, it doesn't appear to be the priority. Oh, touch the sky. If the world was run like Freemasonry, it would be a far better place. Uh, I don't know where I would be without it. I would be a, a lost soul. <laughs> There are definitely people who join Freemasonry um, for the uh, the kind of mystery side, the um, the side where they think there are sort of Dan Brown style uh, secrets to be found. Illuminati, devil worshippers. But I'll say one thing: if you don't understand something, how can you judge it? It's a shame that there is a public perception of Freemasonry that it, it's a kind of professional network when it very much isn't. What it stands for is a brotherhood that helps and cares about other people. And also, at the same time, you can have a lot of fun doing it. I could go anywhere in the world and visit a lodge. And I'm going to meet someone who just comes from a totally different background from me, but he was initiated. We shared that in common. It's a wonderful thing. I can't wait for you to join. For those who have joined, Freemasonry can become much more than a hobby. How are you? Your name is on the list there, John. In Cardiff, the consecration of the new music lodge, two years in the planning, is just minutes away. OK, let's get the show on the road. It's time for founding member Matthew Sims. Gents, you, you two need to be on the reserved seats. 
and Director of Ceremonies Peter Jones to discover if their hard work has paid off. Nervous, but I'm just, we were just waiting, you know, there's nothing, nothing worse than just waiting for the event to happen, is there? You remember that when we line up down there, you lead in the back of you. Yes, all right, here we go, as they say. Yeah, well, sort of. I had a feeling of pride, you know, um, because it's a historic day and you're going to be in, uh, bringing a lodge into South Wales province, which hopefully is going to be in the history book for a long time. It went superbly well. Every, every element of it just, just flowed. Um, everybody did their job to perfection. If anybody had never seen a consecration and came to see that, they would be blown away. It was worth every minute, every sleepless hour when I was thinking about it, every rehearsal we had, every meeting I had with the team, worth every minute. So it was great. I was elated and, you know, that everything went as well as it did. This pride and the privilege of being involved in something um, so great. And, you know, hopefully the Lodge will, will go on to succeed for many years. I spoke to Peter afterwards and he was delighted with the way things went. Mission accomplished and I think a beer or a very large gin and tonic is, is the order of the day now. So if you'll excuse me, I think I'll run off and do that. Thank you. He certainly earned his gin and tonic, yes, yeah. And several afterwards. And at the New Music Lodge's first festive board, Matthew gets to put his Masonically funded singing skills to good use. As clouds that in sunshine are open. Serenading the newly appointed worshipful master. I've always been indebted to Freemasons. I've come from not a rich background and, you know, a working class background, I suppose. And um, I've had assistance from people on the way. There's nothing like helping another. It's making good men better men. And there's a number of things. We all take it in different understandings. Um, there's, a, there's a charity connection, but it's really about making a good man a better man. And, and we are, we're all, we're all sort of a family of brothers. And that's what Freemasonry gives you, you know, it's a universality uh, and it's something that I'm really proud to be involved with and I'd encourage anybody to become a Freemason. So mold it be, so mold it be. Shout out to all my brothers through Freemasonry. Let's meet on the level. I earned three degrees, had to kill me because they couldn't get my secrets from me. So mold it be, so mold it be. Shout out to all my brothers through Freemasonry. Let's meet on the level. I earned three degrees, had to kill me because they couldn't get my secrets from me.